Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the idea of projection. Projection is useful whenever we have some sort of curved surface that's very difficult to integrate over. So let's pretend now that we have some dam that is a semicircle shape and extends down to some depth h. Since we're a semicircle, this is also h wide. And we want to know what the total force on this dam is. Now, in a very general sense, we can take some differential area, split this off from the rest of the dam, and look at the pressure that's pushing on this little area and get some differential force from that. The idea of projection just looks at taking this force, splitting it into its x and y components, and treating each of those individually. So we can say that the water is pushing some amounts in this way. I'm going to call this a differential fx component, and pushing in some amount this way. The benefit of this is that we can look at these individually, rather than trying to integrate all of the dfs, the big dfs, together. Instead, we can look at just the dfx and the dfy components. So first, let's take this little chunk of our system and try to decide what this dfy is going to be. So we're just going to take all of the water above this and hope that that will give us the dfy. So this little chunk looks something like this. Now, to talk about the total force that this little section gives on our differential area here, we're going to go back to statics. Basically, we're going to say that the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So what forces do we have? We have gravity pushing down our water, and then we have some normal force that's pushing up. Those two forces together are keeping this chunk of water stationary. Now this Fn, this normal force that we're looking at, is exactly the dfy from above. So we can say that the force of gravity minus the normal force is equal to zero. The force in the y direction is exactly equal to the weight of all this water on top of it. So taking this concept, we can come over here and look at our entire volume on top of our wall here. This area was bounded by a semicircle. It's bounded by the water on top, and then it's bounded by, and it's bounded by an imaginary line running on the left side. And we want to find the force due to the mass times gravity. Now, what is the mass of this water? Well, mass is simply equal to our density multiplied by our volume. So we know the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Our volume is going to be this area multiplied by some width. So we have to say that this width goes into the paper some amount, and I'm just going to call that W. So what is the area of this region? Well, if we can find an area of a square with sides h and a quarter of a circle with a radius h, we subtract those out and we end up with the piece that's left. So our area is simply h squared, which is our area of the square, minus this portion of the circle, which is pi over 4 times h squared. So our total volume is going to be h squared, 1 minus pi over 4 times w. Our force in the y direction, so this force pushing down over the entire thing, is just going to be our mass multiplied by gravity. So mass is rho times volume. So we end up with rho g times our volume here, which is h squared w, 1 minus pi over 4. I'm going to take a quick moment to look at all the units here. So rho is in kilograms per meter cubed. G is in meter per second squared. H is in meters, so this is meters squared. And W is in meters. These three meters cancel out with these three, and we're left with kilogram meter per second squared, or a newton. This is good. We have units of newtons for force. Okay, so that takes care of the Y component of our force. But we also need to look at the X component. So I'm going to draw a very similar thing to what we had before. Instead of looking at all the water on top of this, however, 
I want to draw an equivalent wall a little ways out to the side. Now this wall is at the same depth as our slanted wall, but it's straight instead. Now we're going to use the same thing as before. This is statics, so the sum of the forces in the x direction has to be equal to zero. So we can say that there's some force from this left-hand side that has to be equal to the force from our right-hand side. We have the mass of the water still, but this is not in a direction that we care about for the forces in the x direction. So we can completely ignore this and just say that F1 minus F2 is equal to zero. So these forces are equivalent. Now, what do we do to actually find this force F1? Well, we've done it before. We have some pressure distribution, and this is relatively easy to solve. So now we're going to do the exact same thing, but with the entire surface that we had. Our full surface looks something like this. We're creating a equivalent wall. Doesn't matter where in the x-axis that we're actually doing this. And we want to see what the total force is due to pressure on this imaginary wall. Because conservation of linear momentum is telling us that whatever forces are applied to this imaginary wall in the water also have to be applied on our real wall. So we can find this out in a couple different ways. We can use the equation method, which just says that the force in the x direction is equal to rho g h bar a where h bar is the centroid, we can use the integration method and go from 0 to h and integrate rho g y w d y. Or we could use the geometry method and take the area of this triangle, which has a base of rho g h in a height of h, and say that we have rho g h squared over 2 to account for the triangle, then multiply by w. All of these are equivalent, they're basically just different ways of looking at it. So long story short, whenever we have a curved surface, we can simplify this a lot by using this very simple formula, the idea that the sum of the forces on a fluid element, a piece of this fluid, has to be equal to zero if it's not moving. So sum of the forces in the y tells us that the force that this fluid is enacting on our surface is exactly the weight of the water above it. And the force acting in the x direction is the exact same as if we had a vertical wall instead of one that is curved. So we can calculate the weight and we can calculate the force due to an equivalent vertical wall. Both of those methods are a lot simpler than trying to, say, integrate on this directly. And the beauty of this, of course, is not only that it allows us to solve more complex problems, is that it allows us to solve those problems much more easily.